Hey everybody on YouTube, this is Kyle Snyder once again, aka Clipton, and I'm doing yet another NFL Top 10 list. This time I'm doing one by request of one of my subscribers. I'm going to be doing the Top 10 Quarterbacks Who Never Won a Super Bowl. Now, I don't mean like exclusively backups or starters or whatnot. I mean, it's just all around who quarterbacks who didn't win a Super Bowl. I mean, if you won a Super Bowl as a backup or as a third stringer, you don't count. It's like top 10 quarterbacks who didn't win a Super Bowl. Here we go. Number 10, Matt Hasselbeck started out as one of Brett Favre's backups when Brett Favre was still in the Green Bay Packers. You know, after a few years, he went over to Seattle to play with the Seahawks. He did make it to the Super Bowl, you know, Super Bowl 40 against the Pittsburgh Steelers in a game in which the Seahawks probably would have won if there wasn't a whole bunch of controversial calls in that game that ended up giving the Steelers the Super Bowl. He also played in Tennessee for a short while, you know, playing alongside Jake Locker. Then after a while, you know, he went over to Indianapolis to be... Andrew Luck's backup, and and yeah, he's still active in the NFL. He still has a chance to win the Super Bowl, but who knows if that'll happen. I mean, it's going to take a lot of luck for the Indianapolis Colts, literally and figuratively. You know, not only with Andrew Luck, but also they got to really rebuild through free agency to get that Super Bowl, Bowl team that they need. Anyways, number nine, Steve Air McNair. He's most famous for playing with the Tennessee Titans, and and his nickname lives up to it. You know, he really could air it out. And I mean, he brought the Tennessee Titans to the only Super Bowl that they ever played in. You know, Super Bowl forty or thirty four, the Rams versus the Titans, in what was one of the most exciting. Super Bowls that I've ever seen. It came down to the wire, you know, it came down to the very last play in which, you know, he managed to connect with Kevin Dyson, but Kevin Dyson was tackled one yard short of the goal line by Mike Jones, you know, giving the Rams the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's just, you know, and sadly his life ended way too soon. So rest in peace, Steve Air McNair. You certainly were an exciting player to watch. Anyways, number eight, Donovan McNabb. He played a majority of his career with the Philadelphia Eagles. He got them to like five NFC Championship games. You know, only managed to win one of them, um, in which you know he got the them to Super Bowl Thirty Nine. You know, unfortunately, they could not hold off the New England Patriots long enough to win that Super Bowl. McNabb had many other opportunities to make it to the Super Bowl, and unfortunately could not capitalize. He eventually was traded over to the Washington Redskins where he played there for a season or two. You know, Then he went over to Minnesota where, sadly, that was the last team that he played for. Or, you know, McNabb, he's, he was one of the best quarterbacks for the Philadelphia Eagles, but... But he's nothing compared to the next one. Number seven, Randall Cunningham. This guy, dim, you know, demonstrated what it meant to be a mobile quarterback. I mean, yes, for a guy who never played in the Super Bowl, he nevertheless could excite and a lot of fans watching both with his arm and with his legs. Well, more with his legs than his arm. But anyways, he's... It, he really was a great quarterback in the 80s. He's, you know, and then in the 90s, you know, he kind of started to decline a bit. You know, then, of course, he went over to the Minnesota Vikings. During the 1998 season, he really reinvigorated himself. You know, he had one of the best seasons along with the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings that season could have gone to the Super Bowl, but, of course, Gary Anderson missed what would have been a game-winning field goal in that game. You know, the game went over into overtime. The Vikings couldn't capitalize. The Falcons could. And sadly, that really closed the window on him 
of what could have been his last chance to win a Super Bowl. But nevertheless, Randall Cunningham sure has left a legacy. Number six, Ken Anderson. This guy was a beast when it came to playing in cold weather. If you, if you saw the Freezer Bowl, you know, the Bengals versus the Chargers in the 19. 19- 82 AFC Championship game, I believe it was. I think it was 1982. That or yeah, 19, no, 1981. 1981 it was. As yeah, it's like this guy was a beast. He had humongous hands. You know, he could throw the ball very well. You know, he only played in one Super Bowl, but and of course that Super Bowl was when he lost to Joe Montana, who won his first Super Bowl. And yeah, and Ken Anderson, in my opinion, was one of the two best quarterbacks for the Cincinnati Bengals. The other one being number five, Boomer Esiason, also one of the greatest left-handed quarterbacks out there. Boomer Esiason really knew how to play offensive well with the Cincinnati Bengals. He knew how to play against specific defenses got the Bengals to their second Super Bowl. Unfortunately, they lost to the 49ers, led by Joe Montana as well. Talk about bad luck for the Cincinnati Bengals in the 80s. Yeah, they made it to two Super Bowls, but they lost to the same team to the same quarterback. I mean, oh my gosh. Yeah, Boomer Sison shortly left the Bengals. Also, to go with the Jets in the early 90s, you know, where he didn't really get too much done. So, yeah. Anyways, number four, Dan Fouts, another quarterback who did not play in the Super Bowl, but nevertheless was a Hall of Famer and had many, many records for the San Diego Chargers as well as in, as overall NFL records. This guy was one of the cornerstones of, of Air Coriel, which anyone who knows Air Coriel knows that it was one of the most prolific offenses in NFL history. I mean, if Boomers, I mean, if Dan Fouts had a great defense to go along with his great offense, I have no doubt he would have gone to the Super Bowl a few times, but obviously that wasn't the case. I mean, Dan Fouts answered a question Do you have to play in the Super Bowl? in order to be considered a great player in the NFL. Of course, he never played in the Super Bowl, but nevertheless, the legacy that he left was a very significant one. Anyways, number three, another Hall of Fame player, Dan Marino, possibly the absolute best quarterback to ever play for the Miami Dolphins. I mean, yes, Bob Greasy... And the Dolphins of the 70 did win the only Super Bowls that the Dolphins ever won, you know, in 1972 and 1973. But nevertheless, Dan Marino, in my opinion, was the absolute best. He had so many records in the NFL. You know, at one point he had the record for most passing yards in a single season. That has since been eclipsed by Drew Brees and more recently Peyton Manning. And Dan Marino, you know, he was a first-round ballot Hall of Famer, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, he only played in one Super Bowl, which he lost to Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers. So many quarterbacks on this list lost to Joe Montana. Imagine that. Anyways, next up, number two, Fran Tarkenton. In my opinion, he was the best quarterback who ever played for the Minnesota Vikings. Yes, better than Brett Favre because Brett Favre only played the, in the Minnesota Vikings for two seasons. Fran Tarkenton and was one of the most important pieces of the Minnesota Vikings offense and it's in the early Super Bowl era, but sadly just couldn't get it done. I mean, obviously in Super Bowl IV, you know, they fell to Len Dawson and the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, along with that 65 toss power trap play that ultimately sealed the game. Fran Tarkenton, of course, eventually made it into the Hall of Fame, but and had so many chances to make it to the Super Bowl but, or to win a Super Bowl, but ultimately could not when he should have. And finally, the number one quarterback who didn't win a Super Bowl that definitely should have, Jim Kelly of the Buffalo Bills. I mean, this guy 
Yeah, it's like he was meant to win a Super Bowl, and yet for some reason or another, couldn't. I mean, he and the Buffalo Bills made it to four straight Super Bowls, Super Bowls 25 through 28, and they couldn't win a single one. I mean, Super Bowl 25, you know, they lost because of that wide right field goal. And the other three, you know, they got blown out by the Washington Redskins and the Buffalo. And Buffalo lost to, not only lost to the Dallas Cowboys, but got absolutely destroyed by them in two consecutive Super Bowls. I mean, Jim Kelly definitely deserved a Super Bowl ring, but just couldn't get one. And it was a curse for the Buffalo Bills. I mean, they had four consecutive chances to win a Super Bowl and just couldn't get it done. I mean, his legacy remains incomplete because he couldn't do it. I mean, if he had gone to, the, if he had won a Super Bowl, you know, he could have been talked in the conversation amongst the greatest quarterbacks who ever won a Super Bowl, but sadly will remain on my list as number one as the greatest quarterback who never won it. So that's my top 10 list of quarterbacks who did not win the Super Bowl. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're open for ideas on what I should do for my next NFL top 10 list, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.